Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokos Mystery. This will be part 265R. We're reviewing what we continued, or what we started, Sunday. The topic, of course, is the spirit of error. And uh, we had, uh, at that particular time, when we first entered into this lesson, defined the spirit of error. The word error comes from a Greek term, plane, which means deception, delusion. We've been looking at the effect of the spirit of delusion, the spirit of deception, as it affects the human race and human thinking. <clears throat> In continuing with this principle, we find that there are more than one spirit. There is an overall spirit of error, and there are lesser spirits of error. <clears throat> Scripture teaches the existence of many deceiving spirits, or spirits of error, these are going to manifest to Christians in the latter time. In other words, in our time. Turn to 1 Timothy, the 4th chapter, verse 1. As we're turning, mm -hmm. should we understand that each of these individual spirits that you've mentioned has obviously increased, or has had their influence increase, I should say, but not necessarily all to the same degree? No. Hmm. No, because they're not all the same power. Right. Not all the same uh, composition, I'll put it that way. Okay. But their effect is basically to cause the individual to lose the sense of objective reasoning, objective understanding. Okay. And a follow-on from that. <coughs> Since... Satan has been given the greatest potential of any living being that there ever was created. Mm -hmm. Should we understand that his increase of influence has increased far more than anyone else? Well, it's his potential to manipulate spirits okay. is greater than the others. Right, but the point I'm trying to get to is, since we've seen the increase of the influence over the, these past however many year, years, mm -hmm. has his potential, or has, has the capacity reached closer to the totality of his potential? No, not necessarily. It is what is he, he's allowed to manifest is increased. At that given point in time, okay. Yes. He would have originally gone a whole, 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 right. whole okay. hog, okay. but the father wouldn't allow it. He's, right. he's, in, he's allowing it to increase I incrementally. <clears throat> First Timothy, fourth chapter, verse one. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, deceiving spirits, spirits of error, and doctrines of devils. So he, <coughs> he prefaces this with the understanding this is going to happen in the latter time, our time. It wasn't happening in his time. Why? Because of the Lord wouldn't allow it. I was listening to uh, <coughs> comments by a man named Doug McGregor, who is a, um, a very <coughs> knowledgeable military, retired military figure, and he was talking about <coughs> America's situation vis-a-vis -vis what's happening in Israel and Europe, and he was saying Washington basically he was saying Washington lives in a state of delusion. Completely, yes. I see the truth of that. And uh, this is a person who is not religious what, at, at any perspective, but he can see that they are living in an alternate state, that, that they are living in reality. They cannot be impressed with reality. They're totally isolated by spirits of illusion, spirits mm. of error. What I find interesting what you've said is that Clearly these people believe, because they're in that delusion you're describing, that nothing has changed for themselves. There has been no uh, increase, no decrease, everything's exactly as it has always been. Yet we see the significant change, just if we look at the parcels of uh, the 
the nation, as we talk about all the time. Yes. The representatives that we know, yes. they think that everything's exactly the same as it was five years ago. Yes, not only that, they feel that <clears throat> their decisions are always productive, always mm. positive. Mm. And um, <clears throat> they have, basically, they say, when you get to that situation, these people surround themselves with yes men. Yes. They will not yes. acquiesce to any, any other <clears throat> uh, uh, point of view but what they've accepted. So then that proves that they spend more time substantiating the nonsense that they now believe than they do in pursuing truth. This happens all the time. It happened to Hitler. It happened to Stalin. It happened to uh, <coughs> Yamamoto. It happened to all the movers and shakers that come under judgment. God isolates them with spirits of error. Right. Right. so that they're immune from comprehending objectivity therefore they cannot make correct decisions they're going to make things that cause them to go into destruction the problem with this is these individuals leading the whole country down the, the, the tubes of destruction right so is it possible that part of the reason why he's, he, he gives them the cup first is to give uh, the populace the opportunity to see the difference uh, no, because the, the, the judgment is virtually simultaneous. Okay. You're going to have judgment on the nations, you're going to have judgment on the government, those that rule the nations. They're both going to go down to destruction. Sure. The only ones that are going to be spared are the wise that see it for what it is before it right. happens. <clears throat> well, let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture teaches. Now we're going to go into what we talked about Sunday, the sin spirit. The spirit of error that indwells everybody. Scripture teaches the sin spirit that indwells man entices man into desires that are not his, but the spirit that is indwelling him. Romans 7, um, Romans 7 verses 14 to 20. This is why you're going to have a judgment on the nations. The Lord is judging the nations because of their actions. Their actions are according to their yielding to the spirit that's in them. Right. The judgment on, the, net, on the, uh, the governments, the rulers, are the result of the seducing spirits, the spirits of error, the spirit of error that they have yielded to that's leading them to destruction. So when those people that you're talking about say to the Lord, it wasn't my fault, I didn't know, what's his reply? <laughs> there is no such case in that respect. Because everybody knows nobody does evil accidentally. They do it decidedly, that's a decision that they make. If you hear some of the things that I hear... <laughs> You'd be believing the opposite. People, you know, people try to <laughs> rationalize, yeah. but they're not convincing anybody. They don't even convince themselves. themselves. Exactly. They know what they're doing. Nobody sins innocently uh, or ign out of ignorance. You right. sin because you made a decision that you're going to do this particular thing, and that's it. And the reason they they make that decision is because they have been moved, motivated. Mm -hmm. And all they're doing is trying to come up with a rationale to justify yes. what they knowingly did. Anyway, <clears throat> we're in uh, Romans 7, starting in verse 14. Here Paul equates the sin and the law of sin and death. There is a balance. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Can I just draw your attention to the word sold? Yes. Are we hearing sold because for that action, sin has come into the human race? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, the, 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 uh, the human race <coughs> has been basically sold into the ownership of the Luciferians. Right. right. By Adam's transgression? Yes. Adam sold out the human race. Does that not then also include the own individual transgression? After this, okay. yeah. Each one 
because of the, 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 the sovereign decision that he makes, puts himself under the dominion of the sin spirit. <clears throat> I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For that what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. So Paul illustrates a principle here. <clears throat> a person knows right from wrong. <clears throat> he comes into that understanding at the age of consent. But he can discern what is right and what is wrong, and he makes a decision to do wrong knowingly. Yeah. Paul here is saying, I know that what I'm doing is wrong, but I'm impelled to do it because the desire is so great right. in me that I just allow it to take place. Yes. So you, you said it was age, age descent. I thought it was age accountability. That's what it is. Well, you basically know to do wrong, know to do right, and you were sent to do it. So what age is that from a human perspective? It depends on the child. Some mature more than others. Mm. It's when you come into the knowledge of knowing right from wrong that you become accountable for what you do. Depending on the, uh, the nation or the society. For Jews, for example, uh, Bar Mitzvah 13, that's how they look at it. Mm -hmm. Places in Africa, it's seven, eight, nine, you know, younger because as far as they're concerned, you're a man at that oh, point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And even there, you can have some children that may know four or five mm. and others yes. later on. It right. depends on the individual because no two souls are alike. So does this help us to understand that since the, since the spirit starts off in the new earth, at the point it comes to the old earth to be clothed in the fleshly apar, it's at that point that the decision to give in to the sin spirit happens. No, after the person is born, okay, he, he's born with the potential to sin, but making the decision to sin, happens it happens at the age of accountability, okay. where he makes that decision. I know, I know this is not right, but I'm going to do it. Right. But what I'm highlight highlighting is, it's not possible that it could happen in the new earth. No. Because no, that's, no, that's, that's, that's no, a pure, pure environment. Yeah. Yeah. It's been pronounced pure. Right. Yeah. And it's entirely responsible to the individual soul. It's not your parents, you know, bringing you up correctly and all this stuff. Right. Or is it? No. The age of accountability is when you sovereignly are aware of the decision that you're making. Mm -hmm. Well, for Mason, that's probably three years old. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Little shyster. Yeah. Anyway, let's go on. <clears throat> for that which I do... I allow not, but what I would, that do I not, but what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent, I understand, <clears throat> I consent unto the Lord that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Here Paul lays his finger on <clears throat> the truth of the matter. He knows that this desire does not come from him. It comes from something within him. Right. Because he's said previous to that, I delight <coughs> in the good things, yet I do bad things. Mm. Why? Because I'm impelled to do it and I yield to that impulse. Right, right. So in, in saying the yield, he's mm -hmm. accepted because of responsibility. Yes. So Mr. Jones, you taught us over and over and over, so the scriptures tell, tell us about we have to die to self, okay? Now, so now, in, in a manner of speaking, that's dire of our fleshly <coughs> desires, okay? But, is there something in the spiritual realm that we also have to die to? No, because everything is carnal. And your will is the deciding factor. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's all God holds us responsible for. What did you decide to do? Did you yield to that, or did you fight? Paul here is illustrating the fight that every born-again Christian has. The problem is, <clears throat> it's not taught. Because people identify with the fallen nature, and they try to control the sin spirit from their own strength. Right. Can't be done. Because it can't. <clears throat> Verse 16, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. So he's talking about as an evil presence, an evil intelligence, 
absolutely no good whatsoever in its composition and its dwelling within me. <clears throat> For to wit, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I want not. I don't know. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my flesh, of my mind, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Now what Paul is illustrating here is the importance. It is not optional. The importance of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm. You have to have the power of the Holy Spirit to live according to the demands of God. God demands perfection. Yes. So we see there is a spiritual influence that we have to keep at bay at the same time. Okay, but what, what I'm, the point I'm bringing out here, John Z, is that one of the first things I learned from Chris was he goes, where's the kingdom of heaven? Mm -hmm. The kingdom of heaven is within me. Yes. Okay. So now, so if the kingdom of heaven is in me, and I also have this spiritual influence in me, and it, it's to whom I yield is who I'm being directed by, I understand that. But you see, the battle is from day one, and so it's not, it's not going to rest until you're either dead or you're born again. Mm -hmm. Yes, but the outcome is in the physical, not in the spiritual. It starts in the spiritual, manifests in the physical. You get a, a desire. Desire comes from the sin spirit. It's a spirit on the dark side, causing the physical to be corrupted and unusable to God. People are completely at the mercy of the sin spirit. Because they identify with it. They think it's them. Mm. Only when you come into a knowledge of God and have a new nature do you understand only through your progression in wanting to understand right. the Holy Spirit will give you comprehension <clears throat> that there is an evil presence within you seeking to destroy you and now you have the ability through the baptism of the Holy Spirit to fight against that and overcome it. But as you said, most born again Christians don't reach that point. No. It's, uh, mature, it's, 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 not it's not taught. It's not taught. People are taught, all things are new. What does that mean? That means, oh, your old life now is you're going to be able to perfect what you couldn't perfect before and go on living the life you lived before. Only this way you're going to overcome all the problems that you had. What should be taught is that that is under condemnation. It's dead. It's going to go into judgment. You live after the carnal, you're going to die. Unless you cut it loose and grow in the spiritual, the new nature. If that was taught, people would have a, a better comprehension of what they're dealing with. But let's go on because we're going to cover that a little, a little greater as we go on. <clears throat> Turn to James, 4th chapter, verse 5. Do you think that the Scripture saith in vain <coughs> that the Spirit that dwelleth that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? So he's reminding them <coughs> of what Paul is saying in Romans, the seventh chapter. We're fighting against <coughs> an evil presence 
that is within us that seeks to have its own will done through us. Which brings us to the main theme. If you don't learn anything else about the sin spirit, understand, understand that the sin spirit is the essence and the quintessence of deception. Jeremiah 17th chapter, verse 9. <clears throat> the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? <clears throat> He's talking about the sin spirit that resides in the heart of the individual. Paul said, In me dwelleth no good thing. In, in me dwelleth an evil presence that's deceitful and desperately wicked that seeks to have its will done through me. Now what is the result of this? The result of this is Proverbs 16, verse There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, the end thereof are the ways of death. Sin spirit will lead that soul directly into the torment regions of hell, if he yields to it. Because the sin spirit has only one desire, and that's to fulfill its desire, at whatever cost. That's why you have heartless dictators that can kill and not feel an iota of sorrow, mass murderers. Why? Because the gratifying the lusts of the sin spirit within them, which means that they are willing to kill any sensitivity, any humaneness they ever had, in order to allow this desire to be fulfilled. Thinking that it's them. It's not them. They yielded to this, this thing that caused them total destruction. What's interesting about what you just now said is, that, is the there seems to be an inference where when there's a sin spirit operating and you're not resisting him, the slaughter of innocence, the more innocence, the better the gratification yes. is, which yes. is it's a detestable. It's, it's, I can't even imagine the distorted perspective, but that's what happens. The mm -hmm. sin spirit rewards you mm -hmm. for slaying the innocents. Well, what happens is the person gets yielded to the sin spirit, that detestable sensation of pleasure <coughs> that they get at taking life is alien to them, but when they yield to it, then they become subject to it as though it were their, their own motive. That's why you have these mass murderers in jail that justify the most heinous crime as though, you know, why am I being you know, persecuted about this. What was wrong with what I did? What? These these predators <coughs> that, that, that traffic in children and love to see innocent children mutilated and uh, these guys that uh, the abortionists that live off of uh, taking babies and killing them in the womb. A normal, natural mind would rebel at that. Cool. But the sin spirit delights in that kind of thing because it's a heinous, deceptive, evil machination from the pit of hell. The scripture tells us <clears throat> in no uncertain terms that if a person is desirous of remaining ignorant 
of life, of who himself, who he is, what he's dealing with, he's going to come under the influence of the sin spirit. Hollywood. What is Hollywood? It is the essence and the quintessence of pseudo reality. You get an Oscar because you did this master performance as somebody that you aren't. Right. Everything about it is it's false. Yeah. No reality to it. That is its claim to fame. It can project something as being real and there's absolutely no reality to it whatsoever. Well, that's the life that the human race lives. It's been given into a pseudo-reality. 90%, 99% of the people that are alive go into eternity believing a lie. Know the truth. The truth shall make you free. People don't pursue truth. We live in a country that's content to be lied to. And I have a question. What's being said? Did you get a chance to read that the article? I, 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 the, the videos. I started one. Eye-opening. I'll, I'll tell you about it. In the yes, eye-opening. I already know uh, Daniel Long's his name. I, I already came across it. Oh, you did? Uh -huh. Eye-opening. But let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture teaches a person pursuing the lust of the sin spirit can never, can never be permanently satisfied because the desires are not his, but the spirits within him. And that spirit is never satisfied. It wants more and more and more. As the person sees that that spirit wants more and more and more, and it becomes more and more debauched, does he recognize, hang on a second, this is not me. So there's, there's obviously something else going on. Or is he completely sold out to it? When you get to that point, you're sold out to it. Right, so you, so you couldn't you're even ask that question. given the ability to control your actions. Hmm. And then it, it's just greater and greater control. It's like a person on drugs. These guys that overdose, they, they take this, that concoction, and you say, so what mind, what sane mind would want to do that. Well, they're under the influence of the desire to get a greater and greater right. exhilaration of a high. Right. So we we have a, a <coughs> tendency to examine this, the thoughts that go through our head because the, this Bible plainly tells you, examine those thoughts. Mm. I don't know about the whole human race, but I suspect the majority of the human race does not know they are supposed to analyze from where each thought comes from and test them, test, test the origins of the of whoever sent in the thoughts to you. Your thoughts are not self-derived, they're given to you. Mm. So, but the, nobody knows that. Even Christians, they don't know to sure. examine your thoughts. You have crazy thoughts going through your mind all the time and you don't even question it. Well, it's because you're under attack and you're a weak person and have not prepared to defend yourself. Amen. So, Amen. it just persists. Christians Continue. are not, <coughs> the human mind doesn't work that way. The human mind is programmed to think anything that goes through their minds is theirs. Yeah. They originate it, they act upon it. That's why you have people with psychosis, neurosis, and all sure. the rest. They think it's them. Sure. <clears throat> and then you have somebody who's going to sit there and tell you about what your problem is, right. uh, who's got this degree. You know, the biggest suicide rate is under people that are psychologists and, and, and all that. Right. Paying money. They you. have a clue. Mm. When you read Freud and Jung and all the rest of them, they didn't believe in the soul. They look at these as influences that come into a person from within that person. It's vague and nebulous where the origin is. They're right. just dealing with what it is now. Right. <coughs> the so human where does a person that has bipolar, bipolar, what do you call it, uh, personality the same yeah. as being in that influence? They're under an influence, yes. Bipolar, day. schizophrenic, right. you name it, it's all spiritual influences. But the person is never given an understanding because society does not believe in what it can't see, feel, taste, smell, and hear, and define under a microscope or a telescope. Sure. Mariko, do you know somebody like that? Half my, half my friends. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Right. Literally, you, have, you can help them. 
But they have to want help. Exactly. They have to want yeah, help. Yeah, well, I, I, I was joking. I have a, a couple of like that that um, that are like bipolar. But in all these things yeah. that, that we're, we're uh, exploring, we realize more and more how weak the church is. The church <laughs> is so weak. In fact, that word, I think, is even too good for the, the condition of the church. The church is so weak, so soft, so fluffy, so nonsensical that it deserves everything it gets. There's no other way to describe it. Well, it's because of the leadership. The church is run so by terrorists. So being terrorist. bipolar, is, is, that, is that a... Um, oh, God, I can't even think. Um, it's called bipolar disorder. Possess, possess, right. possess, possess, no, it's influence. It's an outside influence. Oh, influence. It's an influence. So it can be, it, it can be corrected of by, course. by, uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, every, every mental, if you want to call it that, disorder is a spirit coming against that person. But it starts with the spirit, the, the person wanting a change. <laughs> if they just want to feel different, that's a different thing. If they actually want to get rid of the situation, you can take them through that. Because you're equipped to do it, Mariko. It's, 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 it's a child's walk for you. Sure. But they have to want it. Otherwise, you're you're singing the wrong tune. Right. So we got understand it. then I that... I got it. We understand then that, Mariko, that you've been given this understanding because that's what you're supposed to be doing. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Okay. Here's another heads up. Alcoholism is spiritual influence. Right. Strong spirits is what Strong they call spirits, it. Strong spirits, yes. When a person drinks, they open their mind up to spiritual influence. That's what they call alcohol spirits. <laughs> yep. Yes. True. Yes. Well, let's go on. We're in. Uh, we're going to back to James, fourth chapter, verses one to five. He hits the nail on the head dealing with the power of the sin spirit and the degree to which it can affect the individual's life and pursuits in life. Mm. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members. He's talking about each one of you <clears throat> enters into this because you yield to the desire of the sin spirit within you. Mm. He's making it simple. <clears throat> you lust or desire and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. The sin spirit is such that the the vessel within which the sin spirit is operating can never fully satisfy the sin spirit. Because the sin spirit, if it achieves a degree of satisfaction, it's going to up it. It needs a higher level of satisfaction, gratification from whatever it is that it's leading the vessel to pursue. But doesn't that imply that at some point, assuming that the vessel continues to, to give into it, the, the vessel will die? The vessel will be destroyed, yes. And then what will the spirit do? Have to move to somebody else? No, it takes the soul to hell. Yeah, but that, my point is, that's not the be all end all. There's more work to do for that sin spirit got, before the end. No, of it's got that soul. It has a whole lifetime right. Of in, okay. of in housing okay. that soul. That's his for eternity. And in eternity, he's going to feed off of the energy of, that, of soul. that soul with his lust, his desire. That's why people in hell have desires that are never fulfilled. Should we understand from what you've said then that each less I'm going to use this lesser spirits for a minute. Each lesser spirit develops, for want of a better term, that one soul through life. And that one soul through eternity. It's cultivating. That's its food. Yes, right. Yes. But there are other spirits which cultivate and develop multiple souls. Sure. It depends on the spirit. Okay. Depends on the potential. Right. It depends on its lust, its desire. You have a million different motivations. So if you take a, 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 a non-corporeal spirit at the level of a, a principality or higher, meaning over a, a, a city, a, a, a nation, all of those souls belong to it. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yes. 
Well, in this situation, <coughs> what you find, and you see it, a person that's covetous, they're greedy. Yeah. You can never satisfy that person. Yeah. You can never get enough because when they get, they want more, 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 more. Whether it's, if it's that, if it's uh, fornication, they want greater and greater levels of satisfaction, deviation. You can never satisfy the sin spirit. Mm. It's always going to want more and more. It's never satiated. And it becomes, of course, the object of destruction. You get these mass murderers. They can't stop. They keep on going and going and going until they get caught or get killed or whatever it right. is. You get these fanatics that uh, envision themselves. Uh, I was looking at this thing the other day about these guys that love living on the ragged edge. <clears throat> this one guy was, um, uh, you know, um, Indy 500. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> winning these trophies and all the rest of that, he's got to go faster. Right. He's got to get a greater right. motor, motor vehicle, uh, a newer car. Never satisfied with what they've done. Never can reach a point where you say, oh, well, well that was nice. I'm going to go over and do this. No, they go deeper and deeper right. and deeper until it consumes them, mm. destroys them. Let's go on. <clears throat> Verse 3, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss. They may consume it upon your lust. This whole aspect of the <coughs> seed faith movement in the churches is based off of this. Right. Um, name it and claim it. Yeah. You're going to ask for this, ask for that. Uh, you can manifest this and bring this into your life. It's always these guys that are the movers and shakers, millionaires. But they never get enough. They so, got to get bigger congregations. They got to get greater and greater uh, funds coming in, and all the rest of it. They're never satisfied with what they have. So, what we're understanding in your description is, these leaders are inflaming, and inciting the lusts in their congregation. I need a Mercedes 500 outside of my house. I need a whatever it's to be. Yeah. That's the sin spirit increasing yes. in every one of them. Yes. So they can never, ever be anywhere near God in that sense. No, no. That has nothing to do with it. Sure. It's all on the other side. It is a uh, an evil based on an illusion. People believing it to be some righteous movement of God. Where it's not, it's right, where the deception comes sure. in. Sure. Verse 4, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not the friendship of the world is enmity with God. So here we find the linchpin. The cosmos, the world, is the system in which it is designed for the individual to fulfill the lusts of the sin spirit. Hmm. Uh, this world is known, it's basically built off of a class order. You have the bloodlines, which are perpetually over everything else. And they are like uh, parasites, they're siphoning a life out of the, They never allow people to be free to live life. They always have to influence to control. Because they desire, they're, they're satisfying the desires right. of their sin spirit, right. which is dominion, wealth, and perpetual control yes. over everything. And death. That's what, that's what the end of it is. Yeah. It's all based off of deception. These people are deceiving themselves. They're self deluded because you cannot have truth. Mm. If you had truth, this thing couldn't ex exist because it's based on falsity, non truth. Truth would Can destroy. I ask a question? Yes. If these people are really, really being controlled and they don't seem to want help, is there anything anything that will help? Or are they gone? The only thing that can help is for them to want to understand the truth of their situation. Mm -hmm. Which God always stands right there. Mm -hmm. He's wanting mm -hmm. people to know. But people fight it. They don't want it. 
Because under the delusion, under the delusion, they think that they're going to lose something. They're deluded right. from pursuing truth. Go on. What are you saying? Then it's hopeless, right? Or is God having no. a way to No, people? it's up to the person. It's up to the person. It's really simple. All you got to do is want it, and right. God will give it. I guess you could say that at the point a person gets tired doing what they're doing, but you know, to get tired you have to have a certain amount of objectivity to know that you're tired of doing that thing. Yes. But at that point, the person then would, I guess like me, scream out for the, you know, the help of the Lord. But as Richard says, most people don't do that. Knock, seek, and ask. Amen. Yeah. The person has to will for understanding, and as soon as they do, understanding will be there. Right. So do you quit praying for them, or do you just... Never quit praying. Never quit praying. Never quit praying. When you pray, this is what I believe, when you pray, God immediately answers your prayer. What happens? The person is rejecting. Right. The person is rejecting. But keep praying because ultimately your prayer may wear down their desire to reject. Mm. And then they'll receive. Georgia, sometimes I'm, I'm struggling for the correct way to pray about a situation. And what I'll ask, I'll say, Father, let me see this situation through your eyes. Let me understand it that way so I can more correctly pray for this situation. And that's what he does. And then, and then it comes to me. I, I have, it's just a different approach of doing the same thing. He says, pray without ceasing. But if you don't know what to pray, ask him for direction. Ask him to help you and how to pray for this person. And so you will, you will see it will make a change in your own life. So what we're understanding then is that the only thing you can do, that's the best, the best way to look at it, is to pray. Trying to do something else apart from praying is a waste of time. Prayer is the most effective. The scripture says the earnest, effective prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Consistently pray, and when you're praying, believe. And through believing, you thank the Father. And when you thank Him, it says, if you believe that you've received and you've thanked Him, then you're going to have whatever it is you've petitioned Him for. But it's not going to come in your time. It's going to come in the Father's time and in the Father's way. Right. You have to leave it totally to the Father, believing that He is above the, the situation and that He can supply the need. You believe that in your heart, then it's going to come to pass. Amen. That's a promise. Amen. Psalm 37, verses 4 to 5. Georgia. Yes. The ones you just gave me tonight? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, let's go on. <clears throat> says, Do you think that the Scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? So here again, it's all dealing with the sin spirit that's within the individual. Which leads us to the next principle. Scripture teaches the only way only way that the born-again saint can comprehend his desires is to totally dominate the carnal nature. He then can begin to pursue the things that truly satisfy him. Number one, and an individual realizes that these desires that are coming through him are not his, mm. then he's halfway through conquering the problem. Because he has receive some level of objectivity. Yes. Yeah. And he can begin to separate, understand, hey, this is no, I don't want this. Paul talks about that in Romans 7. He says, this stuff that's going through me is not for me. I would never want this. I want just the opposite. 
When a person does that, he's on the way to understanding that he can free himself from this. Amen. And then what he does is to continue to mortify, put to death, the sin spirit's desire in him. You know, I have to comment that. The pastors of our nation, and I say our nation only because this is the last bastion of Christendom as we know. Mm -hmm. If they could know and understand what you've taught tonight, to recognize that through their behavior, because A, they think they know something already when they don't, and B, when they know they don't and they're, and they're hiding that fact and won't allow truth to come out, they're actually condemning every single person in their congregation to this eternal death. They now become the spirit, the evil sin spirit. They yeah. themselves are sure. now the evil yeah, sin well, spirit. Yeah, well they're allowing it to operate to through them. Through them, exactly. In, in that respect, they condemn themselves and the people that are under their authority. You know, so when we come back to Jeremiah 23 verses 1 to 2 and we see the word evil being used by the Lord, people are shocked. To, to this, they, they cannot believe that the Lord would use the word evil to the very people that are supposed to be feeding his people. But as we begin to understand these, uh, these truths, these concepts, it becomes very clear that because of this egotistical, ludicrous standing in the way, creating a breach between the father and the person. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can use any other word to describe them sure. and their behavior. Certainly. A person that yields to the sin spirit is yielding to evil. Sure. And bringing the characteristic of evil into manifestation. Yes. So what's coming with me right now is the whole thing where we Jesus had to come down and be, become human and then die for our sins, so on mm. and so forth. So now, we have to share in the sufferings of Christ and we're going to share in the glory of Christ. Amen. So the Father, He has this thing where He could have just said, well, I'm not going to create Satan and He's not going to tempt the race. He's not going to uh, develop. He's not going to do any of this. They're, my sons are just going to be, all be my sons without any, uh, any manifestation of suffering or earning or developing or growing or maturing none of this is is in motion because i've just created them to be my sons right, right. Now the whole thing is to see him knowing that if you don't have some kind of a justification understanding in your life you take advantage, you take for granted, you don't have an appreciation mm. for things that they're just given to you. <clears throat> yes. So therefore, he has created this master plan that we all have a, sm a little smattering of understanding about, mm. but he's done it all so that he can give us everything. Amen. So the whole thing is, it's like, okay, he's held nothing back. If your inheritance is going to be everything, well then, I think... He's got to be smart enough to know which ones of us he can give us that responsibility and which ones of us can't handle that responsibility. But that's what he's done nonetheless. So you've just outlined the absolute necessity for why we must suffer. Because if we don't commit everything, give up every single thing that we've been asked to do, then we can't receive every single thing that he has for us. It's pretty, it's pretty that simple. Not on the level that it could be Des or it is designed and should be de of course. deceived. Of we're either, we're either we're guessing at 100% or we're not is the point I'm making. And invariably, we're not. The idea is, unless you are willing to lay it all down, you can never comprehend your position. So you can never comprehend that 100% exists? Yeah. Not at all. Because there's always going to be something there to limit your total comprehension. Mm where the Father's leading, what He wants us to understand. We have to have total comprehension of all things. And the only way you can do that is to kill yourself totally, mm. shut down totally that influence that would come in and re uh, limit your progress mm. in the way in which you go. Turn to Colossians, third chapter, verse 5 to 11.
mortify, put to death. Therefore, your members which are upon the earth. What does that mean? That means, and what Paul understood was he could comprehend the difference between his desires and the sin spirit's desires. He had that understanding. His problem was he did not have the ability to bring it to pass. He says, basically, I know I don't want to do this, but I do it anyway. This is the cry of an individual that hasn't got the power to live the life that God wants them to live. Mm. Because they're operating in human strength only. Right. We need God's supernatural power because the sin spirit is supernatural. It doesn't operate in the natural realm. It influences the natural realm, but it operates outside of the natural realm. It doesn't sleep. It consistently is energized and it's setting in motion the vessel that it's in. The idea is the only thing that that vessel has is will to deny it. Well, the baptism of the Holy Spirit gives him the power to bring it about. To say, no, that's why Jesus told the apostles, wait till Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. To live a supernatural life. Call upon the power of the Holy Spirit the understanding, revelation, knowledge, to know what the path is, to know what you need to do, and have the ability to do it. Let me ask you a question on that point, then. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Can the spirit, sin spirit who has attached himself to one person through that person's life bring about the influence of another person to bring these two together so that he can then, so that the sin spirit can then enjoy some other lust? In other words, if, can, can he influence two individuals, bring them together so that, he can, so that the sin spirit can enjoy a greater love? Sure. Okay. If the person is willing to allow it, right. that's where you get this business split personality and all the rest of it. Look, the point I'm bringing out is, I'm thinking about lesser spirits, demons, devils, call them whatever you want, mm -hmm. who are able to control more than one person at a time. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, well, if you can have a, a, a spirit that can dominate a nation, sure. that'd, be no, that'd be child's play. Sure. Um, people influence other people through the spirits that's in them. That's okay. what we're talking about, the spirit of error. You speak and you can put other people under a spell right. if, they, if they accede to what you're saying. Gotcha. So the same spirit can take that person and influence that person's life like it's influencing your right. life. So now that sin spirit controls so many souls. Sure. Right. Okay. Sure. And so on. Depends on the spirit. But what we're looking at here is it's given the man the will to kill the influences of the sin spirit that's in him. Mm. And in this respect, it's not optional. It's mandatory. Paul says mortify. Therefore, your members which are upon the earth. In other words, the sin spirit does not, is never going to allow you to get off the earth. You're always going to be connected to the earth because that's the sin spirit's domain. Right. You, uh, you walk in Christ. You shut down all the desires of the flesh you're going to gravitate toward the heavens. Yes. That's Colossians 3rd chapter, verse 1. Sin spirit is always going to try to connect you to the things of earth. Notice what he talks about. Fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which are idolatry. He's going to take the things of earth and make them alluring to the individual. Oh, you need this. Oh, you can have power to do that. Oh, here's wealth over here. He's going to make the most egregious, detestable things look desirable to keep you on earth, pursuing the things of earth, because the Luciferians dominate earth, control the earth. <coughs> the, the saint is designed for the things of heavens. The saint is not instructed. He's commanded to cut loose the things of earth. Mm. So he can be free to progress toward his inheritance in the 
heavens. So when we're hearing the pastor telling us the opposite of what we've just described and what's written here, that's that sin spirit doing its best to tell you. <laughs> sure, sure. The world is always going to try to allure you with the things of earth. Uh, look at what Satan did to the Lord. All the kingdoms of the earth, I'll give all this to you if you just bow down to me. That's all he has to offer. Amazing. And then he goes on. <clears throat> For the which things say, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. So what's happening here? The judgment is going to fall on everybody because everybody that's under the judgment is earth centered and earth bound. You take a look at the people around you. Can you get five minutes worth of conversation about the things of God no. from the average Christian? Why? Because he's focusing on the things yeah. of earth. Oh, I, I, I've got to see this program tonight. Oh, there's a, there's a sale over here at, 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 at uh, so-and-so. Uh, oh, we got a tea party Bible study over at so-and-so's house. <laughs> the things of earth of what keep people in bondage. You see that the human eyes glaze over. Something happens. The moment you, you invoke God into a conversation, something happens. You know, the, the, it's almost like the spirit in it shuts down any sure. understanding of sure. you know, what's sure. being said. Yeah, it's a reaction. Not only that, but you find, you talk to Christians, even if you're talking to them for a while, and I notice this looking on the internet, it's always the church, the church, the church, the Catholic church, the Methodist church, Presbyterian church, Methodist church, uh, Luther, Lutheran church, Pentecostal church, church. Never the Lord. It's always right. the church right. and the leader of the church, a right. pastor this, mm -hmm. or reverend that, yeah. or so and so, or father this. It's always man centered, organized religious centered, never the things of God and the things that God has ordained for his body. They don't know what the church is organized to do because their idea of church is a human-centered, organized, religious society, sure. if you will. Sure. Corporation. The, the, the ignorance factor is unbelievable. So Paul here is talking about getting off the earth and he's talking about if you get off the earth, then you're gonna you are going to shake off these characteristics. But now you also put off all these: anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man, the human, with his deeds, and to put on the new man which is renewed, which is renewed, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. What's not taught is the fact that when you get saved, you become a new creation with new attributes. People are totally ignorant of that. The scripture is telling us, don't identify with the old Adamic function. Stop identifying as being a human on the earth begin to identify as being a son of God whose destiny is the heavens and you begin to function that way. I take it the attributes that you just referred to are the gifts. Yes. The gifts, the understanding that comes from the revelation knowledge yes. of God and the things of God, the understanding of a totally different reality okay. that you have been placed into given the understanding that you have shut down the old, no longer identify with it, opens your comprehension to the things of the new. Okay. You begin to see life from a radically different perspective. You're not seeing things from a planetary perspective with its limitations anymore. You're beginning to see things from an eternal, glorified perspective. The beauties, the harmonies that life in Christ will automatically surround you with when you become aware of them okay. ultimately will displace what was formerly something that you will look back at with detestation. So this is why Paul 
um, praise that we will receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Yes. Just to know what you're even talking about. You can about. become aware yeah. of what you, who you are and where, you, where you're heading. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Jones. I think I answered my own question in my own head. I'll speak it out anyways. Greater works shall you do than what I've done. That's mm -hmm. Jesus speaking to us. Mm -hmm. Yes. We're going to do greater works than what he has done. So, nobody has seen greater works than what he has already done. Right. But we're not yet still, we're going to still be doing greater works than what he's already done. You now, have to. All right, so now, I know paying for our sin was not a work, or was it a work? Yeah. It was a work. It was a work. So, is there any kind of possibility that we could do something greater than that? Yes. Explain. Jesus said, <clears throat> I look at the Father, and what He does, I do. Him paying for our sin was an act of dying. He, he, we're not called to die, we're called to live. Mm. He said, heal the sick, raise the dead. Mm. Go forth, and whatsoever I've commanded you, that do ye. You look at the scripture and you see what Jesus is saying. He's saying you're on earth, you operate as a son of God, not as an Adamic human. So now, Mr. Yes. Jones, you just you, you said an interesting statement right now. You said, raise the dead. Okay, we know that Jesus raised the dead. The thing of it is, is we're taking a being from his, ex, for where he ended up, out of that. Mm -hmm. Who could do that? God. Only God, yes. And those who are the sons of God mm -hmm. wouldn't sell us to do it if we weren't able to do it. Notice what he says. He said, the Father quickeneth those who he will and the son quickeneth those who he will what does that mean quickeneth means to give life mm. in the times ahead begin of sorrows you're going to function the way he functioned Amen. you're going to go about you're going to give life to those that you choose to give life to remember what jesus did to the what do it name comes he's walking down the street this is funeral procession casket people you know, walking past him, the mother is just totally lost it. She's lost her only son. She's totally, you know, filled with sorrow. Jesus hates death. What does he do? He goes and comforts her, puts his hand on the beer, and raises him. He's quickening whom he will. You, 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 and you will be able to do the same thing. Okay, the now, is there, is there some kind of time limitation? Or generation limitation to that. What if I decide to go uh, resurrect my grandmother? You'll be led to the spirit. You'll know who to do and who not to do. There's no sure. guesswork here. No, I understand that. Yeah, perfectly. So in the new reality, at the point of new reality, immediately, all things which he did will be doing. Right. To those that believe. Of course, of course. Yeah, that's, that's a given. In, in that respect, the only one you're going to believe to that degree is if you totally commit to that degree. Of course. Of course. And in that description, Jesus says nothing will be limited to you. But I, I, I'm, I'm trying to bring out the point that some people will think that they now have the power to start going around doing things for their friends and loved ones. Trust me, people think like that. And I'm trying to bring out to the point that that's not the reason we, 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 we were given these things. We were given these things to rule over and develop the creation. It has nothing at all to do with our own you know, Let me Let me say that, address that right yes. now. A person that thinks that way won't be able to do it. Right. That, excellent. Thank you. You're, You're going to be thinking on a level, operating on a level of God. You will know. You will be directed. And you will be fulfilling the prime directive of God, which is to give life. 
by what you teach, you're giving life, giving understanding. By the works that you do, you're giving life because you are a light. We are going to be entering into the ground floor of what ultimately we're going to be doing when we enter into our inheritance. The door will be open, brothers, to something that you would consider fantastic, but it's just the ground floor. Absolutely. So coming back to his opening statement, only to the degree that the brethren, the saint, the Prototokos, gives his life, lays it completely down for the Lord. Not 99%, not a little bit, completely. If there was such a thing as 110%, that's what I'm talking about. Right. Only to that degree can that person be used by the Lord to give the life that you're a That's a prerequisite. Yeah. 